This week, we are looking at eye-opening breakthroughs. This morning, we're learning what's next in the fight against diseases like Alzheimer's, cancer, and diabetes. Dr. Lori Glimpshire is the dean of Wild Cornell Medical College. She's also on the board of the drug maker Bristol Myers Squibb. Robert Langer is the Koch Institute professor at MIT. Good morning to both of you. This is an extraordinary story, and, and because it shows you where the future of medicine is going in one aspect. So why do you say precision medicine is the, is the future? Why should? Well, precision medicine um, allows us to treat each patient as if they're a unique individual. So now that with the human genome project completed, we're beginning to not only know what the genes are, but to look at their expression. And so if we take a patient's tumor and say, this is the mutation that you have in your specific tumor, now do we have a special drug that will target just that mutation? Mm -hmm. As opposed to radiation therapy or chemotherapy, which is kind mm -hmm. of like swatting a fly with a baseball bat. Yes. And you have many fewer side effects if you can just target that tumor cell and not target the normal tissue around it. So mm -hmm. this is really a breakthrough just in the last couple of years. Dr. Langer, you are working on delivering some of these precision therapies. Explain how they would work. Well, one of the big advances is nanotechnology, that you could create nanoparticles and, say, put whatever medicines that you'd want in those nanoparticles, and then you put an arrowhead uh, you know, that would t on the nanoparticles that target it right to the tumor cell. So the idea is that you'd be able to get very, very high concentrations of the drug into the tumor or whatever other site you're going to, and very, very low concentrations in the rest of the body where it might cause bad side effects. Can we do that now? They're in clinical trials right now. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at Alzheimer's, big concern for a lot of people. What's on the horizon for that? Because I was reading some of the statistics that one in two by the year 2050 will have Alzheimer's. True? It is true. It's, an, it's a really scary fact. Over the age of uh, 85. 85. Over the age yeah. of 85. But I, I think Alzheimer's is an epidemic, the latest epidemic in medicine. As you said, one out of two over the age of 85 are going to have Alzheimer's disease. Right now, we don't have a cure for it. We can't prevent it. But what we're working on is imaging technology so that at least we can detect the Alzheimer's plaques at a very early age. Because 30 years before you get symptoms, you already have plaques forming in your brain. And it's most effective if we can treat people early on once we figure out what to treat them with. And at Wall Cornell, one of our scientists is working on a gene that is protective in Alzheimer's disease. And we'd love to be able to deliver that gene mm -hmm. in a precise manner to the brain. And here's where Bob's technology comes mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. I mean, it seems to me there are two things going on. One, because of mapping the human genome, you're able to identify the gene and the specific gene. Right. On the other hand, uh, while that's developing, you're developing the kind of technology that enables you to get in there and target that gene. Mm -hmm. Now, is one moving faster than the other? I think uh, from a research standpoint, both are moving pretty fast, but I mean, everything in medicine takes a while because you have to do clinical trials. Yeah, show us what that means. Well, this, this is an example of something we're working on that's actually now in clinical trials for osteoporosis. These are little microchips that, uh, were, that we've designed that you can actually put in the body, and you can actually do remote control drug delivery, actually even with a cell phone. Or, or a Blackberry or something yeah. like that. So the idea is that you have little wells. You can even put antennas uh, on these little Amazing. chips. Yeah. And, you have, yeah. and you can communicate with the chip yeah. outside the body and then just say, deliver the drug at day one, day two, even while the woman's sleeping. That's actually how the clinical trial was done. Nanotechnology wow. microchips, thanks to you both. <laughs>